Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is February 12th, 2021. Here's an easy way to write ground state electron configuration sequences. There is just a code to memorize uh, 18, 27, 36, 45. You write that across. And then uh, the orbital order for writing ground state electron configuration sequences is s p d f so it's easy to memorize s and then like the document pdf that's how i memorize uh the order so if you're asked what is the order uh, orbital order for writing ground state electron sequences the configuration sequences uh, s pdf and then all you need to do is memorize 18, 27, 36, 45. And here's why. Because if we go to the uh, right next door, you can take 1 through 8 or 18 to represent 1s to 8s. Then you skip a row and you move down one. Well, skipping a row is moving down one. And then you repeat 2p to 7p adjacent, moving down. And then you skip a row, move down, skip a row down, and then you write uh, 3d to 6d. And then do it again for f, uh, 4f to 5f. And then once you have that, so you got 18, 27, 36, 45. S, P, D, F, and then you write, geometrically write the orbital count in this manner, and then you approach the order going southwest. So 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P, 4S, 3D, 4P, 5S, etc., right? Until you come to the end. Going about trying to memorize the electron configuration order is kind of tedious and it's not really practical, but if you just write this code and then arrange the orders geometrically and approach southwest on the count or the sequence, then you have your electron configuration order per orbital. Next is to Go to this chart here, and we see S, P, D, F, and it's 1, 3, 5, 7. So you could write 1, 3, 5, 7 up here as well. And that's the number of suborbitals per orbital classification. All you do is multiply each number of suborbitals times 2. And then you can decipher the maximum number of electrons per orbital very, very easily. So now you're in total control. You've quickly populated the electron configuration order. And you do know with absolute certainty the number of maximum electrons per orbital. So you can do that first. And then on an exam or homework, you are allowed to use the periodic table element so we have the atomic numbers determining the number of electrons per element many times you'll be asked to write the electron configuration sequence for the following elements and ions so we have chloride aluminum ion tin and tungsten so we go up and we look for Tin is 50 electrons, chlorine 17. If it's chloride, uh, Cl minus 1, it's going to gain an electron, so it's actually 18 electrons. So you could always start with the noble gases because they are electron stable. So if you were writing the electronic configuration for tin, you could start with krypton and then populate the remaining electrons. So four, 14 more to go to 
tin. You could do that, but you still have to write out the order so you know which orbitals and electrons come after the noble gases. So noble gases are used because they are, again, electron stable. And many of your test questions, the answers will be in noble gas plus some configuration. And sometimes you'll see the entire configuration sequence written as well. So you have total control on what the correct answer is, how to determine that. So we'll start with chloride. Chloride is a negatively charged ion and gains one electron. Therefore, 17 electrons plus one electron is 18 electrons. So if we write the configuration uh, sequence for chloride, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, because 2, 4, 10, 12, 18. So the answer would be argon, unless the longhand configuration is required or in the multiple choice selection. Next we have aluminum ion that's uh, positively charged so it's uh, Al3, Al plus 3. So actually it's going to lose 3 electrons so we have to solve for 10 electrons. So again 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 which becomes neon so you can enter a neon for the correct answer okay now we have element tin this one has 50 electrons and so remember we're going by this configuration order and then each orbital has a maximum number of electrons and I stress maximum so you can enter less than the maximum that is permissible as well. So 50 electrons for tin SN. Noble gases are electron stable and can be used as an electron count shortcut. So uh, ideal way to write the ground state electron configuration for tin is to write it out longhand. So we have the order here. Uh, so 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 36, 38, 48, 50. Now a thing you got to be careful of because we can start with Krypton and then add 14 electrons to get to 10. So it would be Krypton plus the remaining ground state electron configuration. But one thing you got to be careful of is if you were to do it as if there was no double gas shortcut, uh, you will run into a problem when you start with Krypton and then realize that your orders are mismatched. So a uh, better idea is to write the sequence for the noble gas first. So Krypton is 30... What would we say that was? Uh, 36. 36. So go ahead and solve as if it's for 36, not 50. So you go ahead and 1s2, so 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 36. And then you can draw, draw a bracket because P. We'll go up to six electrons but you'll have to cut that short to actually this is perfectly at six but many times you'll have uh, a max count that you can go under so 10 12 18 20 30 36 so you stop there and so uh 5s2 I think 2 is the maximum for S. Yeah, 2 is. So then you continue on. And uh, so sometimes, like, you may need less than the maximum in order to equal the noble gas abbreviation or shortcut. And it is, uh, if you go 
over that, then you're going to jump to an orbital that is not in sequence, and then the answer becomes wrong. So this one, we got away with it as a perfect 6 at P. So that's 36, so then 38, 40, 50. So the ground state electronic configuration for tin is Krypton, 5S2, 4D10, 5P2. And then lastly, tungsten, we have 74 electrons, uh, 74 electrons, tungsten W. So uh, W, uh, tungsten is an element, not an ion. Therefore, tungsten has 74 electrons. We start with xenon, the noble gas shortcut. So xenon is 54 electrons. If we continue on, we'll make it to tungsten. So you can select xenon, 54 electrons. So again, 2, 4, 10, 12, 18, 20, 30, 32, 34, 44, 50, 50, 54 and notice F orbital can contain a maximum of 14 electrons but we only put 2 in there not 14 because 2 4 10 12 18 20 30 32 34 44 50 52 54 we don't want to go up to 14 on F. We want to stop right there. And then this can cancel out and become xenon. And then we're left with 5D10, 64, 6P6, 60, 54, 64, 70, 72, 74. So the correct answer is xenon. 5D10, 6P6, 7S2, 5S2. So we computed that relatively quickly, and you should see that on your uh, multiple choice uh, selection, or you may see the whole sequence written. I doubt they'll do that. They'll usually truncate with a noble gas shortcut. So Solve for the noble gas and then add the rest in, and then you're, you'll easily master writing ground state electron configuration sequences. And I call it the easy way because, in order to amass all this data quickly, you can just memorize the code 18, 27, 36, 45, SPDF, and then 1, 3, 5, 7 times 2 is 2, 6. 10 and 14 electrons maximum and then to figure out the order instead of memorizing you can draw the chart and then decipher the order through a southwest approaching order skipping a row coming down per orbital and then you have all this data and then of course you can use this chart here i mean draw this chart one three five seven two six 10, 14 for the number of uh, electrons max per orbital, and then uh, memorizing the orbital uh, ascending order. Just memorize S, and then like the document PDF. So very easy. And next thing you know, it writing the ground state electron configurations for elements and ions becomes very simple. And uh, this chart really makes things efficient and uh, easy to populate. Thank you for watching this tutorial and have a great day.